Hello everyone, I'm Rafael Caro and together with uh, Chan Shuo we are studying the relationship between lyrics and music in Beijing Opera. I'm gonna, going to do a very brief introduction to the background to this question and then Shuo is going to present the methodology he's proposed to, to address it. So, um, Tingju, this Chinese art form, is usually translated by Western scholars as theater or drama or opera according to their own interests. But for Chinese audiences, both literary and musical aspects of this art form are equally important. So that means that lyrics had a, plays a very essential role in, in, this, in this music. It's also worth noticing that uh, Chinese opera is a tradition without composer. So music, and most of the time also lyrics, are created through a set of conventions um, established by tradition and put into practice by the performer who is in the center of the creative process of this, of this uh, genre. The problem with this is we lack an authoritative source for our research, like in case of uh, scoring Western opera, because we can have the same versions of same version of the same aria, but changed by the performer because he thinks that the music feels in a different way in, in his performance. But what makes really exciting uh, studying the relationship between lyrics and music in Beijing opera is the fact that Chinese is a tonal language, right? So linguistic tone is the pitch component of a phonological unit that is significant for distinguishing lexical meaning. But this is a little bit confusing that for those who are not familiar with Chinese, I'm just going to make an example of what tone means to, to let you know what we're dealing with. So Mandarin Chinese, standard Chinese, has four different tone categories. Just take the syllable ma, pronounced with these four tone categories. So linguists divide, use this grid, dividing the range of natural speech into five levels, having the lowest in the bottom and the highest in the top. So the syllable ma in the first tone is described as a high pitch level tone. This ma so the second tone is a rising tone, starting from the uh, medium level, like ma. The third tone is, has these shapes, ma. And the fourth tone is a falling one, so ma. So here we have four different tones, four different syllables with different tones that make them mean, have different meanings, so they're written also differently. And besides that, we have a neutral tone, or yeah, the, the, the fifth tone, or neutral tone, which doesn't have a value by itself, but the, its pronunciation depends on the character before it. So, having presented that, our hypothesis is that Beijing Opera performers traditionally try to reflect tone contours, because they're meaningful, in the melody in order to make the lyrics understandable. Okay, so the problem is not that straightforward. We have to face two sets of conflicts. So first of all, it's a conflict of dialects. Beijing Opera uses two different dialects regarding tones. And this is important because Chinese traditional music relies on tones of the dialects in, in, their, in, their, in their music. So what that does mean? These two dialects share the same tone categories we saw before. So they, all, they, they both have these four tones and the neutral tone. But the thing is that they pronounce these tones differently. So the values are different. For Beijing dialect, the, the contours are the same we saw before. But for Huquan dialect, these have very different um, tone contours. The problem is that literature doesn't give us a, a reliable or final explanation of where or when uh, a dialect is preferred. So we, we suppose that Huquan dialect is preferred, but Beijing dialect is used for sure. But we don't know why, a priori. We have to analyze that. So the second conflict is a conflict between linguistic system and musical system. So that means that when the performer is creating music, he has to make the lyrics understandable. But at the same time, he has to, or she has, to create a musically appealing melody. 
So what does that mean? Let's take an example. Here we have a, a, an excerpt for, from an aria. Uh, this is uh, the basic unit, both for literary and musical purposes. It's a couplet. So it's a stanza of two lines uh, of seven characters. In this case, um, they can also be of ten characters. Um, and they're always divided in these in this three, three sections for both um, literary and musical purposes. So this aria is sung in a mode called sipi, which means that um, the first line of a stanza should end in the second degree of the scale, and the second line of the stanza should end in the first degree of the scale. So it seems plausible that in this position, <coughs> musical system will be preferred to the intelligibility of, of the lyrics, because the mode has, has to be expressed. And we presume that in, in the end of each session, this would be also the case. And besides that, uh, regarding rhythmic uh, characteristics, uh, this section is sung in a metrical pattern called yuanpa. That means that um, it is a two-four meta in a medium uh, tempo. So in this case, the singer had time enough to express, to deliver each character with a melodic contour, which could match the tone contour in linguistics. We, we can hear this, this example, hopefully. So, okay, so it seems natural to study the relationship between the tone contour and the melodic contour. But there is some other issues. For example, this character here is sung with a very long melisma. So where is the tonal information expressed in this, in this, uh, in this phrase? And in, in other metrical patterns, like Dig One, this is another section of the same area, which is sung in a a metrical pattern called Lishui Ban, which is a very fast, quick pattern uh, in one four meter. So in this case, uh, the singer doesn't have time enough to sing a melodic contour, so each card that is conveyed is delivered in only one, one note. I was can uh, listen. So there is no time to press a melodic contour for each character. So, the, the former approach is not usable here. We think that we have to look at the pairwise relationship between the previous and the following character in order to look for the expression of the tonal information in this music. So this is far from me. Now. OK, so I'm going to focus on three aspects. Um, First of all, the, our uh, oh, sorry, I haven't I haven't used this before. Uh, first of all, the the goals of the of our studies, and then the methodologies and the, the tools. So for the goals, uh, we have three stages. The first is a beginner goal, uh, which we simply after we use the computational tools for data annotation and extraction. Uh, in a lar large corpus from our data collection uh, simply to establish a statistical correspondence uh, for these two types of uh, units that Rafael talked about, single syllable units and the pairwise pitch level units. Uh, this is pretty preliminary. And then we have uh, the, oh, I'm sorry, did I? Yeah, intermediate goals which would be uh, more perceptual relevant as to what is the tone bearing unit in the melody. And perhaps a perceptual study of uh, how tone information is realized in, in singing, perhaps in different tempos. So and then we have a long-term goal, uh, which is uh, if we can formalize some of these competing constraints from the linguistic system and from the musical domain where we probably will be able to borrow from a uh, from the gradual learning algorithm from Borgman Hells uh, which is uh, implemented uh, in the computational phonetics 
that learns a ranking of these constraints and to predict uh, the probability of uh, correspondence versus violations uh, in the surface uh, this statistical distribution compared with the, our observations. So our tool uh, for now we use a lot of the PRAT which you see a little bit from Suncop's uh, uh, demonstration. Uh, PRAT is an acoustic analysis uh, software that is standard in phonetics and phonology but also are uh, uh, in use in music psychology and speech processing. Uh, and uh, the Pratt scripting language is a high level object oriented uh, scripting language. Uh, uh, we, uh, usually we can do that with a quick development and testing ideas and especially it has a lot of good features for uh, enhancing uh, speech and music data handling. Um, Right now, we have uh, written some script, scripts for the purpose of annotation, uh, data extraction, and also for, say, a synthesized uh, pitch track in pure tone from the from pitch extraction, uh, uh, and or query some YAML files uh, that shows the results of your your desire. Uh, the result of that annotation is called a text grid, which uh, looks like this. Uh, so here you have, you can see that this, this is the an, an, an analysis window which shows the pitch track, uh, but you can display a different uh, features there. And here is a text grid that is viewed the, uh, in sync with the audio, which is a nice thing that you can really play by clicking on here the se <coughs> segments and hear the, the things. So finally, I'm going to talk about the methodology. We have, uh, by and large, four steps. First of all, the data, data collection. Right now, we have uh, 58 CDs in 500 plus areas. Uh, those raw data will, will go through this uh, <coughs> an data annotation stage, which we will do uh, uh, partially automated segmentation for now. It's, uh, it's only partially uh, automated. And then uh, we have. Uh, annotation uh, with the tiers of information uh, such as the tone contour and the, the melodic contour or the artist rhythmic uh, information. And then we go through a, a data extraction stage uh, of both the pitch and the lyrics and we will need to uh, find some of the pitch descriptors so that we can effectively and meaningfully uh, derive the uh, statistics uh, one, once we segment and annotate enough data. So finally we have a data analysis uh, stage. So right now we're focusing on the annotation extraction uh, part uh, which uh, I will give a very short demo on the, on the annotation uh, and on the lyrics uh, extraction and uh, even more brief on the pitch contour. So uh, first of all, I have two uh, flow charts on these two components. For, uh, for the annotation, automated annotation, basically we have two data sources. On this side, we have the lyrics files that we extracted from the Peking Opera uh, libretto database, which are all in the Chinese ca characters. And our first step is go through, through a native to pinyin conversion uh, with the Java tool that I wrote. Uh, so you can see that it converts the Chinese characters into romanized form with the tone marks in the end, which is very useful. So, so on this side, we have another data source, the uh, area sound files. And uh, we have uh, segmentation pitch tracks. So when these are ready, we, uh, we uh, incorp incorporate them into this uh, annotation script. Uh, um, sorry. And then uh, we get a, a fully annotated text files. So then uh, continue with the text files. Uh, once we generated those text files, we can uh, grab uh, several, I mean, uh, as many as those as you want, and then go through the sound clustering script, which is uh, data extraction uh, process of the single word unit. So in this task, basically we're interested to extract 
all of the tone one, say all of the tone one pitch melody segments from all of these uh, sound files that, that you have, and clustering them into one one sound file with the with the intervals, and you can really visually and and uh, you can hear that. Uh, and get it in the sense of where you go next, and then we do tone two, tone three, tone four, etc. So uh, once we have those files, we have another option that is to extract more uh, specific information, such as the uh, position information as to how the w position of the word uh, in a, the structure of the melody might uh, influence uh, the correspondence. So here we have three kinds of text that we can automatically find. The unit boundary, uh, the, the, f the boundary for the first line of a couplet and the boundary for the second line of a couplet. So finally, I go to the uh, pitch contour descriptors. Uh, as I said, we need to find a good uh, descript descriptor for the pitch as well and to meaningfully uh, visualize the, the, the ex correspondence with the, uh, with the lyrics. So uh, first step would be, of course, to get pitch tracks. Uh, I'm going to play this uh, synthesize that I, I've done with the, with the pitch track from Melodia. It's a very short excerpt. Uh, I, th I think uh, I'm going to talk about two things. One is the Octave errors, and one is the identification of uh, prominent melodies. So, as you can uh, hear, that there are some octave errors, which uh, is uh, what we need to work on because. In our task, uh, we need to, to have a, a more accurate representation of, of, of where the contour went. And octave errors is, is kind of, a, we, we have a high standard for that. But then uh, you can also hear for the first half of the segment, mostly you don't hear singing, but you hear the accompaniment. Uh, but that is not going to be a problem for us because, um, because we already have the segmentation and the uh, tags for the for where ex exactly the words are, so we would just pick out those segments, and uh, uh, we would not care about the uh, the accompaniment. Uh, and also, uh, we are building on the work of Ken's master thesis research uh, on the results of machine learning in classifying the accompaniment, uh, sort out them from the uh, singing. So. Uh, that will be not a problem. So, okay, that's all.